What is the point of giving everyone trophies? Or what is the point of the welfare state? Or why would the Pope say there's no such thing as hell? Or ask yourself, what are the ideas behind this? Why are they driving us towards these these ideas and how would they affect people today and how would they affect, more importantly, the next generation behind us? What's their end game by pushing these things onto us? It's all part of a much larger idea. Each one of those components kind of play into each other uh, to create a culture that we live in now that ultimately is afraid of failure. It doesn't know how to handle it. There's a huge war on failure going on right now that I don't think people fully can understand how important it is to let people fail. It's, it's how we grow, it's how we become better people. And I wanna dive into a couple important points I think that get glossed over when. So one thing we need to really understand is how does the brain work and how does failure make us react and how, and what does it drive us to? How does it make us become a better person or a worse person? Or cause we all know stories of people who have fallen apart once things don't go right. Or we also know people who persevere through things that become better people because of this. Well, it starts because we have two main behaviors in our brain. It's called the approach behavior and the withdrawal behavior. I'll start with the withdrawal behavior. It's something, it's it's brought on by two main components. It's brought on by either fear or it's also brought on by happiness. So things like when things don't go your way or when something happens that's, that's a tragedy that you don't expect or uh, when you hear a lot of messages on doom and gloom or when you hear about the impending collapse of our society. Those things, they, they, they strike you with fear and your reaction is to shut down and hoard. You become, your goal is to survive at that point. There's nothing else more important than surviving. You're not looking to the future. You're not trying to, to better yourself. You're trying to survive. That's all there is to it. So there's no point in trying to worry about what else is going on in the world because you're just trying to survive. On the flip side of that, also happiness triggers the withdrawal behavior. When your brain gets pumped full of dopamine, when it's the chemical in your brain which which gets triggered to make you feel good inside, it's it's the same thing you get when you get a trophy, when you win a prize. Uh, it's the feeling that you get when you get a bunch of money. It's all about that immediate gratification. What happens right now? Oddly enough, it's also the same thing that the drug cocaine fills your brain with. That means what that does to your brain is it tricks you complacent. You don't want to move because you're happy. There's no need to try to progress any further because you are happy at this very moment. So again, you're not thinking about the future. You are thinking about the um, the immediate world around you. You're not trying to improve. And it's not sustainable. It makes you withdraw and eventually it's kind of like a high. It's like why well, it's a, cocaine does this. It's a high and it brings you crashing down once it wears off because there's it's not sustainable. Now the flip side of that would be the approach behavior. This is the behavior you get when you are um, trying to achieve a goal. So that's why it's so important for everyone to uh, be striving for something greater. That's the way your brain is wired. It's the approach, it's it's the future thinking method. It's how you overcome obstacles. It's, it's when things get thrown at you, you have a plan to work around it. Uh, it's something that isn't persuaded by failure. It's essentially hope. It's what gives you hope for the future because you're striving for something much, it's you're striving something beyond you. It's the same idea behind sacrifices. It's why you sacrifice something in the present for the future. With the withdrawal behavior, you don't do that. With the withdrawal behavior, you are focused on hoarding what you can for this immediate moment because tomorrow's not guaranteed or the next second isn't guaranteed. You think behind sacrifices, you're thinking for the future. You have a hope that in the future, things will things will get better. And by sacrificing this now, you are improving your current standing. Uh, it's the same reason why people work late nights is because they're trying to reach a goal. It's the same reason that people invest in certain things because they're looking for the, they're looking, they're hoping for something better down the line. So how does this fit into this idea of a war on failure? Why does Satan, why is Satan pushing us to a point where we are afraid of failure? Well, I kind of talked about before, when you are in that approach behavior, the goal setting behavior, when failure comes along, you're able to, to go around it. You're able to work through it. You're able to adjust your course to better fit it. But when you're stuck in that, oh, that withdrawal behavior, when you're only trying to get that next high in happiness, or you're trying to survive the next moment by thinking about doom and gloom, when failure comes, you don't know what to do. You have no goal. You have no sight. So you're running around aimlessly. So how does this play into today's society? We think we see things like everyone gets a trophy. You are as good as you need to be at this current moment. That's not much of a goal focus, is it? It's it's all about you are good right now. There's no need to improve. That's why everyone gets a trophy. What about the welfare state? Let's talk about that. 
You, you don't need to get a job. You don't need to improve your situation because someone else will give you that money. Someone else will give you and provide for you. You don't need to try to better your situation. Again, that's either immediate gratification because you're receiving money or, and at the same time, it's feeding into that fear that any minute that could be ripped away from you. So you're just trying to hoard it. You're not trying to better yourself. It's the same thing that we see in our school systems with teachers teaching to the lowest common denominator. Kids don't need to improve themselves because they will just lower the standards to make sure everyone graduates. It's, it doesn't actually improve people. It tries to meet them where they're at and keep them where they are. So why? Why is this a goal by Satan? Well, the obvious reason is because one, if you don't have a goal, then you're not improving and you're not trying to improve the world around you. You're staying where you're at, either in fear or in ignorant bliss. You're not trying to change things because, well, it, they're as good as they need to be right now. You're surviving and that's all that counts. And also something else that's very important that people miss is because once that fear hits and once something bad that comes along, you don't know how to handle the failure. You don't know how to handle what comes at you because your whole life is shattered. Your whole world that you constructed in this fear slash happiness deconstructs and you get thrown into chaos. You don't know how to turn or where to go because you're, you weren't moving in the first place. So why does it, so when something bad happens, you're stuck in that failure. It's, it's why we saw things like when Trump was elected, uh, the, a lot of the millennials were sitting and screaming in the streets because they didn't know what was happening. They didn't know how to handle this world view that they put in place of happiness and fear. They didn't know how to, to progress with it. So they sat there and screamed in the streets and they started yelling because they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to handle the failure. That's the same reason we try, we see people turn to violence in their family life or to turn to drugs because they try to get that dopamine back. They try to get that happiness back even if it's just for an immediate hit, ultimately being dragged back down and not progressing anywhere. It's a push to keep us where we are at. It's a push to keep us happy enough to stay where we're at and too afraid to move forward. Because as, as we are not moving because of fear or happiness, we become easy to control. You want someone to go somewhere, you just int introduce a little more fear to push them somewhere. You want to pull someone somewhere, well, you just make things a little easier if they go this way instead of taking the hard road like we're supposed to. Eventually, that leads us only to a path of communism, socialism. That's why you see such a, a huge push in our culture today called democratic socialism, because people just want to be given things to build this fake reality around them. It's not what we need. What we need is an approach behavior. What we need to do is think is forward thinking, to have a goal. This fear of failure, it's another reason that we can't have civil dialogue, civil discussions and, and open dialogue about different ideas. It's because if you're wrong, then that's failure to you. And you don't know how to handle that. So you just turn to insults, you turn to, to violence, or you turn to anger. Instead of saying, oh, I'm wrong, I can grow from that, I can learn from that. Being wrong is the perfect opportunity to grow as a person. So we should strive to be right, of course, but also be open to growth in that. So we have to, we have to drive into this approach behavior, this goal setting idea. We, we can't be focused on trying to avoid failure. There's a famous quote, that says a tragedy is a terrible thing to waste. But I would say failure is a terrible thing to waste because if you don't understand how to handle failure, if you aren't able to, to, to pull yourself aside and analyze why you failed and how to adjust your goal in the future so you don't fail, then you're never gonna be able to grow as a person. We have to be able to set our sight on something good and something based on the morals of our society. We need to bring back the morals because morals give us an outline of society and how we're supposed to act. It's it's a, it's a how do we function in our society and, and what do we do that is good and what do we avoid that is evil. By removing morals in our society, it's the same idea because if you remove morals, then you can't fail. If there's no guidelines, then when you screw something up, it's all relative, so it doesn't matter. It's the postmodernist idea. But with morals, we're able to to use them to direct our paths to meet, to go to a greater good. It's the idea behind every belief system ever. That's why there are belief systems. There's a, there's a problem in the world and there's a way to fix it. In Christianity, the problem is sin. The problem is evil in our world and all the evil that's going on. Well, that's the point of the belief system. The belief system. It's to teach us how to overcome the evil in our society. That's what faith is. You can see that in every single belief system around the world. Well, the ones that are that actually make any sense. In postmodernism, there is no such thing as morals. They're, it's all relative. It doesn't mean anything. That's the society that's that we're being pushed to because that is a no-failure ideology. 
A no failure ideology will only lead to someone in control who knows what's going on. Think about it this way. This is a, uh, I got this from Jordan Peterson. He said that the idea is you want to be the one that knows how to handle a tragedy. So in a funeral, you want to be the one that's able to make all the decisions. Instead of collapsing at the idea of a death of a loved one, you want to be able to step up and handle that failure, navigate it and make the decisions because you're the one in control with that. If you just sit around and let someone else make the decisions, you're giving them the control over the world that you live in. That's why our whole society is being pushed to be afraid of failure and to let someone else make the decisions. That's why the government's coming in to make the decision. That's why this new agenda of, of democratic socialism and the, the re-rise of communism is because they want someone else to make the decision so they can't fail because they're afraid of failure because they've lived in this withdrawal behavior for so long they don't know how to get out of it. But we have to be able to step up and take control of the reality we live in because if we don't, well, there's only really one option. And that is having someone else run our lives. We don't want that.